So this is how government is immoral. This organization that calls itself government then only knows how to solve problems the one way, a singular way, <clears throat> and that's with the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. You think every government system they all is run based the same way. on violence? Yes. Coercion. There's no factual evidence you can show me of a contractual relationship with government. Right? Doesn't exist. But you can show me your contract with Netflix, AT&T, you know, car payments, things to look at the terms and agreements. As I agree with the consequences, here's my explicit signature of my consent. I mean, it isn't just being a resident your consent? No, being in a geographic location, it's not, uh, I mean, you can turn that to a very horrible place, right? You're in my house. You gave me consent to, you know, hurt you, right? And that's what government does. You, you're, you're born here and we enforce our rules into. At least the Amish get that. The Amish knows that babies cannot give consent. And so they wait until the child is so like 18 years. Right. They wait until they're 18 and say, here are our rules. The only consequences we have, you break the rules, this rules are ostracism. There's no fine, there's no penalty, there's no stockade. But for the Amish, there's an alternative. What's that? I mean, like going out into the real world. In, you know, today, being an anarchist in this, like, system that's set up there's not really a, an alternative right to being a participant of government well the alternative is uh to live our lives principally right to well yeah but you can't enact change as well without i mean you have to work in the system you're in for a bit in order to change it well the system was never broken because that seems to imply that we can fix it it was never designed it's its only purpose is to hurt peaceful people it was never designed to well, it was built on a lot of terrible things right. and it's you know facilitating those terrible things still because that's what it was built on right um i don't know and i think like it's kind of like a drop in the bucket thing like you can do good things individually but you have to change the entire bucket if you want actual change right and where does change start with ourselves right yeah. within our own interpersonal relationships within our own family and friendships and our community here in Richmond, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's as far as we can work towards change. We can't change the whole world. The most we can do is put that spotlight in the sky and say, hey, we have achieved freedom and liberation through this way. If you guys want to be just as free, follow our example. Yeah. All right. Um, I, but I don't know. I, I still don't, I don't know as much about the specifics of your organization and the ideals, but Personally, I don't know. I, I agree with the basis of it. And That's like, all it is. Um, but not like the way to go about it. Um, I don't know. I think that people should be given freedom and opportunity. Um, and I think that sometimes in order to get that freedom and opportunity, you need organization in order to help you. We are an organization. We are an organization of over 100 people now here in Richmond. Mm -hmm. A lot of families, a lot of students, uh, children, a lot of people from all kinds of backgrounds, religious backgrounds, ethnicities. Um, and the community that we want to build here is someone that has real respect for your private property, mm -hmm. of your bodily integrity. No one should be able to tell you what you can and cannot do with your body, but what does government do with their decrees of laws, right? Real respect for your house, your land. Government says eminent domain says no. Property taxes says you, that's not your property. Um, so. And we want to create a real community and want to get to a better place. It, it starts with principles, it starts with uh, those moral precepts that we already agreed to. It's wrong and moral to initiate force, not sometimes, not an exceptions, but always, right? Universalize that. Government itself is an organization that makes exceptions. It's wrong for you to steal, we'll call it taxes. Wrong for you to murder, we'll call it a, a organized war. Um, well, I think that, I don't know, collective individualism is a nice just wants the Theory. freedom to do things that are illegal. Hey, this, hey, That's all it is. He this just guy, wants to, like, don't buy into his con. Don't listen to this like, guy. He just wants to break the law, <laughs> and it doesn't matter what government. This guy, he it. calls himself uh, a mutualist, which is uh, uh, a things in what, everyone's mutual benefit. Which is uh, a soft form of uh, communism. I mean, um, I'm not. Um, I don't align with a political party. Perfect. Neither do we. We but have. <laughs> I still. Um, like the idea of collective inf infrastructure. Yeah, community organizations, right. Yeah, I think community organizations can be good, but I think that they can also exist harmoniously with like a larger function, like a government or like... What about government function would you like for them to uh, commune with? Or provide that you think that they that only government can? Well, things like um, healthcare, um, like 
as well as like schools and stuff I don't think we should just be allowed to just teach ourselves regionally I think that n not having a regulating force can cause a lot of problems and I think if people are I know it's not about being left to your own devices there's like some there's like community responsibility civic responsibility those ideals and stuff but I don't see that being maintained on a large scale in a right. place like the United States. That is a, as a good uh, area of interest, I would have concern with that as well. Um, you ever read uh, 1984? Yes. All right, so you know, like, when they rewrite history in the books, yes. and people forget what happened back then, that's what happened here. So before Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty, these things like health insurance and health care and unemployment insurance were provided in the market, voluntary and consensually. They were spread all across the United States. They're called friendly societies. Uh, if you remember anything, Google friendly societies, mutual aid societies, and they spread all across the United States, all across into England. Um, and all these communities, especially waves of immigrants that find like the cost here to be high, got together and they made community payments. If someone became impoverished out of their own, you know, no fault of their own, they were able to bas bounce back up. So they provided uh, health insurance, they provided education, they had doctors, they had hospitals. Um, and of course, the last thing the government wanted is a community that they become too independent, they realized they have no need for government, so they started cracking down on them. It's like, where's your license? This building is not up to code and inspection. And they just obliterated all of that well, I and think created their own version. I mean, small scale, yeah. Like in, It wasn't small scale. Yeah, no, small yeah. scale, like in Los Angeles, the homeless population, and, you know, they created their own like autonomous, like tent cities and that was great because they were working with each other to like help each other get jobs and then police come in destroy that and then you just have a bunch more displaced people yeah. i think that on the micro level like like communities and things like that are incredibly important and i think that like especially like the monetary things like i don't know that we should move to more i don't, I don't know the word for it i keep using the word community but um like more like locally focused things yeah. but i still think that i don't know i i still support a larger federal body governing and but they're not run uh, voluntarily right they have to rob from other people you can't really say that we are have concern for your health when we threaten your health at gunpoint to rob from you to give to others right well yeah i mean the police when obama was touting like Look at all these people signing up to our website. Yeah, you, you're threatening to rob them like $200 in extortion fund if they didn't come to your website. That didn't really work for a long time. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with redistributing wealth. And well, how do you redistribute? By taking. Taking. Yeah. So it's theft. Proportionality. Um, I don't see it as theft because it's not for personal gain. They're... It's for collective gain. But it's arbitrary then, right? So you say collective game. So if uh, if I rob from you, if I took your purse and gave it to my friends, that's okay because it's a collective gain, right? No, because I don't, I don't think it's as like black and white as, as that. I don't well, see it. Would you consider consent to be black and white? Yes. Well, if you gave no consent for someone to take your property without your permission, that's a violation of consent, right? <laughs> okay, but I think it's just too simple it is so simple yeah. it, it has to be right it can't otherwise you can't mercury it up you can't muddle it up either there's consent there or not right we're either our free society based on consent or one that is cohesive right that violates that all the time i don't think that consent should be the basis for judge for justice i don't think that consent is the only thing that determines whether you live in a just society and whether people are treated fairly and equally. Uh, what other standards would you measure it by? Um, equality, I want to say equality of opportunity, but I know that's what capitalism is all about and obviously that's right. not at all. <laughs> I know that's not what we have, but I think right. that there should be, I don't know, people should be given the ability to... Well, a, a great place to start if you all want equal chance at opportunity would be to abolish taxation, right? Taxation robs you of nearly half your income. It robs the poor the most, right? Uh, sales tax, local, city, state, federal, imports, exports, all these taxes, every good you buy has been taxed. The money that you have depreciating 97% of its value hurts those on a tight budget because there's no incentive to save. Every dollar just becomes even more worthless. Well, I, but I think taxes can be used to help the lower classes. Like I think you can have stratified tax systems in which people with less money are going to be less burdened and then you know 
the wealthier classes, they have more to give, so they should give more. Well, I mean, if, if they want to give, then that's called charity, right? Yeah. Uh, you can't say that robbing from someone to give to others is charity, right? It's, again, go back to basic definitions. Theft, I mean, I would right? love to believe that people would give out of the generosity of their own heart and be altruistic, but unfortunately, you know, I, I don't think that we're moving towards that. It's hard when at most all. of your income is robbed. Nearly more than half your I income. I don't think is, tax is what makes people greedy, though. Well, it's not so much greedy. It means that you don't have much to give because it's already stolen from you. I think people have plenty to give still. They just don't want to. It's, it's difficult. Uh, I mean, even the largest people who do give a lot of money are philanthropists. Bill Gates uh, donates millions of dollars every year, right? Yeah, but when um, you look at it proportionally, it's. I mean, still not even that much. I mean, even the government doesn't give uh, to anyone themselves. They first they they rob from other people to give arbitrarily to others, right? So they're not uh, exactly an organization of charity, right? But I think that it can be a way to yeah no it's not going to be nothing forced is charitable but right. that doesn't mean it's good. I don't think that I mean government is not a person. It's not it doesn't have more. I don't want to say it doesn't have morality because I do think there should be a moral judgment. But you agree that it was wrong and immoral to violently force your opinions. It was wrong and immoral to initiate force, right? And to the example we were talking about earlier, that what is government? Government does nothing but that. Their only solution is to use violence, to violate people's consent to solve problems. They must necessarily do bad and harm before they can claim that we're going to do good. Like government says, we're here to protect you, but first you have to rob. When government says we're here to protect your property, first they must rob your property through taxation in order to say we're here to protect your property. Well, I mean, there are trade offs. You can't have a system in which, like, I don't know, you, you have to make these sacrifices in order to get the things that come with having a government, having but you never, right, right. education, having health care. But these are things that violate your consent. You never gave, you never had a choice in the matter. Uh, when that happens, that's called extortion. People are famous for that. Criminal organizations do that, right? I don't, I don't think it's extortion though, because... What happens if you don't give up your, uh, what happens if you don't pay taxes? You go to jail. You go to jail. All right, there you go. <laughs> so there's a threat. Yeah. Right? If you don't surrender your property, it will come to hurt you. Yeah. How's that not extortion? I mean, it is a, it's a threat to do good. Well, no, no, it doesn't matter what the thief does with the money that they've stolen from you. What matters is that he stole from you, right? Even the mafia was known to be charitable, but yeah. it wasn't their money. It was money that they hurt other people and stole from, right? So I'm not concerned with what the vulgar does with my wallet. I'm concerned that that idiot finally went consent and pointed a gun at me and robbed from me. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that having consequences for actions that are bad for the greater good isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't think that having to be regulated in order to help others is a bad thing. Like, I would like to believe that people would, it's like with abortion. It's like, personally, I'm against abortion, but, um, no, I guess that's exactly the opposite of what I'm talking about. But I want to give, <laughs> give people the choice for that, but... <laughs> Let me give I you just, a better uh, example. So what do you think then, if government's abolished, you have a free market society that can now cater the very same services you want, right? At the quality you want, at the price that you're interested in, and allows for room for everyone to have access to that, right? I mean, a couple of years ago, flat screen TVs were like thousands of dollars. Today, yeah. you can buy a cheaper version for a few hundred bucks, right? Yeah. Allows even the people who have low incomes to have access to it. Like people who are poor have access now to microwaves, to refrigerators, to AC, uh, to one car at least, uh, yeah. a video console system, right? These are things that are not just uh, things that are for the rich anymore. Well, right? I would like that, yes. I mean... And these things are voluntary, they're consensual, they're contractual. Yeah. They're things that do not violate consent. Uh, so that not be the thing we should aim for instead. Well, I think that's, I think that's a good thing to aim for, but I also... Um, see that coming through a process which like like a more regulated process in which there are like checks and balances making sure that people do get these things and making sure people are given the opportunity to do these things not why just, wouldn't they not get these things because okay in under like a 
collective society? A, how about a community? Okay, and your community. <laughs> Why would they not get these things? Uh, distribution of resources. Um, Wait, so what well, I mean distribution of resources? I mean, even, like, if you live in somewhere, you know, in the Western world, you're going to have generally a higher quality of life than somewhere in, like, sub-Saharan Africa because of, like, geographic determinism. Like, What do you think about Hong Kong? It's, like, one of the richest places on Earth. Yeah, I mean, well, right? Hong Kong, I mean, is, yeah, it's part of the East, obviously. Right. right? It's also, like... They have a lot more interesting lot more respect for private property. On a small little island nation, a lot of people there are rich. A lot of people there have developed a, a mass, a, a lot, lot of, of them wealth. are immigrants, too. Or, yeah. People that are So it's not geographic, then? Working. Well, no, when I say geographic, I mean, like, having, like, access to things, like, uh, like, natural resources and things, having access to these natural resources. Like, what kind of resources? Like, water? Water, things like, like that. Like, the one that government in Flint is poisoning. Yeah, no. And, right, yes, and government forcing those people to buy that water. Yes. That's government. That's not businesses. And did you see all the businesses in Walmart rushing to provide them water bottles? Yeah, for PR. So it doesn't matter. For PR, that's great. That's their own resources that they're distributing. I, I right? still think... Okay. It's not government that goes out into the ocean to are to these lakes to bottle the water to to cap them to process them to deliver it to bring it to a grocery store nearby you and put it on the shelves and to hire someone to sell it to you right a cashier those well, are businesses why does it matter if the government enforces certain things and taxes you in order to help others but then it's fine for a company that's like you know pushing if it's like destroying local businesses that's destroying the environment to come in and bring water bottles and use it as a PR stunt then that's perceived as a good thing all right so you talk about like uh, Walmart as a corporate uh, corporation yeah uh, Walmart is the uh, out of all the businesses that get robbed the most through taxation it's Walmart uh, they get taxed the most out of all of them now I'm not saying that uh, Walmart is great by any measure but if you want to be against corporations then you should advocate for the abolition of government. Without government, there are no corporations. Cease to exist. Is this a piece of paper that allows CEOs to escape liability for their actions, the same immunity the government grants themselves, like state prosecutors and judges, you cannot sue them, uh, and cops for the most part. So it's an immunity from the law that they create themselves. Without government, no corporations, it goes back to the way it used to be in the past, where individuals, because only individual people exist, are held liable for their actions. So no Walmart. Walmart. There's no way you can hold seven billion people accountable for their actions. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, one, one system, of course not. So you, there's, there's going to be, like, seven billion people, seven billion different market ideas and how we can do this. Credit rating systems is a great way. That's uh, eBay, largest uh, business owner as well, that employs a lot of people. How do they manage uh, shady people by a rating system, right? Five stars out of five star. I've been in the business for 20 years. Look at my customer reviews. Uh, three months guarantee, you know, there will not be any problems. Give us a chance. Someone else competing. Hey, they've been in 20 years. We've been in it for 23 years, right? Uh, coupon for free for the first year, you know, or your money back. I mean, okay, yes, in like a macro, like a micro level of having like individualized communities that are like, you know, self-sufficient and stuff, it's great. But the problem is like, I don't know, when they studied, um, you know, indigenous tribes that are like, you know, no government system, they all support each other, it's like a collectivist thing, it's like, yes, it works great and everything, but then as soon as the tribes come into contact with other tribes, things get messed up, as soon as one tribe upstream is, you know, minding their own business, and then they start, you know, washing shit, and it goes downstream, then the other tribes suffer, there's no accountability there. There we go, so what's missing is respect for private property, right, because government does not allow you to homestead privatize uh, rivers so you can't say you're polluting your, your pollution is not a lot because that's trespassing that's a form of aggression on your private property right and because courts here do not respect private property you can't take them to court and hold them liable uh, and that's a result of government government does not respect private property the most it can do is just allow people like Dominion to pollute the James River yeah no right <laughs> that's not the market law and that that's government allowing that because if you own a piece of that river you'd be able to sue and take them to court Right? Yeah. But because no one's allowed to homestead these areas, that's why you have a lot of this environmental damage. And of course, the last organization you want to go to for help in terms of uh, pollution and environmental damage would be government itself, which is the largest polluter on the planet. Yeah, well, and, you know, their whole, the way they 
see the pollution and the way they document it is incredibly skewed and they're yeah no doing right. it is a form of, <laughs> I know I, I completely agree with that but at the same time I feel like if the government or a larger organization were responsible for the whole of the environment and were taking the environment seriously and that was actually something that the government cared about which is I think is something that we can kind of get to through policy change somewhat. I think that if you want to build large infrastructures that are going to be more responsible, like socially and economically in the long run, I think that you need a large governing structure to help facilitate that. One that's not functioning the way that ours is, but I think that, I don't know, that there are ways that we can change it to, you know, help ourselves and help the people. How would you claim that? government has any interest to ever care about the environment when they don't even value you as a human being when they violate your consent and rob you and throw you to cages for victimless crimes. Over two million people now suffering in those cages uh, that's gone to uh, murdered over 35 million people in the last century, the United States government alone. Yeah. Uh, how can you say, if they have no value for the human being, by extension, they have no value for the environment? No, I'm not saying that cur the current government, yeah, is incredibly disrespectful to human life, especially the lives of, like, minorities. Um, and, yeah, the prison system is completely just a wreck. Um, but I also think that it, there are ways that the system yeah. can be changed that makes it more accountable and that gives people more change, like, more say in things. Like, I see something like socialism as an alternative um, in which you still have a large infrastructure that can affect this change. Um, um, there's no factual evidence to show that um, voting politics, government's ever set anyone free, for example. Uh, it only continues to unburden us with more unfunded liabilities. What you see in Detroit, in the city, inevitably will reach you to Richmond. It never will reach all across the United States. These monopolies that they've uh, developed, because government is not a business, they cannot allocate the resources efficiently, which is what led to the collapse of USSR. Uh, these unfunded liabilities will inevitably collapse. Uh, and Detroit takes over an hour for police to respond to 911 calls. There's a guy, though, who provided his own security called Viper Threat Management Systems. He stopped all the hijacking of trucks. He provides security for all these impoverished areas now. Uh, mass transit there has shut down. But this guy bought these four buses, painted them reflect the geographic region of Detroit, and these buses will pick you up wherever you are, call them, text them. Um, you know, there's no political centralized uh, planning route. There's also uh, music on these buses. There's also Wi-Fi. There's also BYOB. It's no longer like a government monopoly law to kind of enforce there. And that's the beauty of the market. That's the beauty of real entrepreneurship there, uh, providing these services where government inevitably collapses and falls. I mean. <laughs> Socialism paves the way to, to communism. One form of area, I mean, it's just, it's just, right, right. So why do we want to go there? Because Starvation and I, we have a great history of, of uh, many, many governments doing that. Yes, no, it's been like, com I completely flawed models in the past and everything. Flawed, and I, that's where it goes. Yeah, and murderous models. But I, I think that, yeah, no, it would be completely unrealistic to have a communist state in, like today. Like I... I it couldn't happen for one, and it probably would, you know, lead to the death of people as it has in the recent history. But I don't think that any sort. I just anarchism is impractical, and we're doing it right now. Anarchy. The essence of anarchy is consent, right? You agreed earlier, right? Yes. You're mentioning that in your day-to-day -day life, you don't use violence to solve your problems. You have a plurality of non-violent solutions, right? Yes. And here, in between us and my friend there, here's anarchy. That's where it exists right now. Wherever there's consent. Anarchy exists. Wherever there's coercion, statism exists. People need to care, though. People need, you can't force people to care about themselves and about the collective. Well, then you can't advocate for government to do that, then, right? To rob from them, to force them to care? I think that a government can. It's if not, people aren't going to care, then I think it can. But how do you know they don't care? Have you talked to these people? Do you have a what? collective uh, research study and going out there and interviewing? Saying, oh, well, and and people saying, I don't care about the poor. The fact that they say, what about the poor, People implies care that they do care. Often, you don't know that. These are just uh, hasty generalizations now, right? I have actually have nearly 300 recorded interviews of many people all around Richmond, and they always ask about what about the poor, yeah. but they have concern. I think that is a good substantial of empirical evidence there to show that people here, a majority, a vast majority, do care.
I think that there's even more evidence showing that they don't care just by looking around and seeing how messed up everything is. If people really cared about the poor, then they would be putting their resources into helping. I don't think that the fact that they're being taxed is the only thing that's keeping them from... Like, but if you cared about the poor, you know, you don't rob from them, right? No, yeah, but okay. people still do rob from the poor. No, I mean, you don't rob them through taxation, right? I, I think that the poor are taxed... When they, when they go to work and get their paycheck and they see the withholding taxes, that's robbing for them. They could certainly use that extra $160, yeah. right? And they're already on a tight budget. That's not helping them, right? When they go and buy a purchase, uh, an item, and there's a sales tax on it of goods when they need to feed their family, that's not helping them. That's, that's hurting them. Okay, but when those taxes are redistributed and, like, able to help them, you know, have things like schools and water and things if it were redistributed properly then i don't think there's any problem with being taxed well in the past in 1960s before lyndon johnson's war on poverty the facts are poverty rates were declining rapidly there was almost nearly zero and the reason being is because all the communities were providing these services themselves voluntarily to the market in the 1960s yes before lyndon johnson's war on poverty so poverty rates were almost nil we're almost gone. Now, when that's of course, that's a problem for government because they need to have a dependence on government in order for it to continue growing. Otherwise, people realize and wake up that we don't need government. We can provide these our services ourselves. Uh, and so, based on those facts, in the very beginning, there's about like 32 million people, uh, 32,000 on uh, food stamps. Today, there's like 32 million now. Poverty hasn't uh, been fixed or grown. No measure of success is exacerbated under government after they eliminated all these other communities that were providing these services to each other and, and saving people from a lifehood of poverty. So we were talking about 1984 and the history of it. That's what happened back then. Mm -hmm. But when we go to government schools, they're never going to tell you that sort of stuff. The only thing you're going to hear is government history, government ethics, a great old government, right? Salute the flag. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I think that some things that the federal government teaches are messed up, but I think that, honestly, it's, I don't want to say it's better than an alternative, because right now, like, the current reality is really bad, and it's not something that I want to say I'm comfortable with, and I support what our country is doing, because it's, it is bad. Yeah. But, I also think it's better than a lot of alternatives. The alternative in the past was, it worked. The alternative in the past that people had health insurance that no one was being robbed to do that. People had unemployment insurance, that people had schools, that the roads were privatized. Uh, the, a, lot of, a lot of the things the government has monopolized used to be provided in the market. Mm -hmm. And then government made it illegal and criminal for them to compete. Just like uh, first class mail, the post office. A hundred years ago, there was a guy who competed against the post office because he said, well, why do you guys have an exclusive right? Anyone should be able to compete. His name was Lysander Spooner. He created the American Letter Mail Company. He did it faster, cheaper, more efficient. He forced the government to drop their prices from $2.50 to $0.03 cents for his competition. Government hated the guy, sued him out of business, passed the law the next year, says, okay, we're not dealing with that again. No one is allowed to compete with us, All right? So this is stuff that in the history books you'll never come across. This is stuff in the past factually has worked in all these different areas. That is the alternative. Where, where these services were provided consensually. These communities were provided voluntarily. They were also provided still in a place that has government and still has an alternative. They had nothing to do with government. Government stood in their way and, and stopped them. Government was regulating the other masses of people that, uh, that like were not being, they were not taking responsibility and they were not investing in their own communities. Now, when you bring up regulating, are you saying that a market can't regulate itself? Hmm. We can have like rules. An economic market? Yeah. Honestly, I don't think it can regulate itself well. Well, but it can regulate, right? No. no? I, I don't see how does How does eBay regulate itself from all the potential theft and fraud and uh, bad, shady deals that go on there? <laughs> yeah, they have their own rules. They have their own dispute organization. If you have a dispute, we have arbitration to resolve that. We have a rating system, right? Bad people whose products doesn't show up on time and broken and missing will never get uh, patronized. 
people who do get great ratings and continue to be successful, right? And reflected in their profit, reflected by happy customers leaving good reviews. Mm -hmm. That is a great form of regulation. Reputation is a great form of regulating, right? Yeah. Um, and we've shown that despite this overwhelming force of tyranny of government, that markets can regulate themselves, right? What do you think would happen if we didn't have any government? Same kind of question that perhaps you can tell farmers 100 years ago. Well, hey, I know you've been used to having slaves, but if you abolish slavery, what do you think is going to happen? You can't, it's difficult to predict, but they can't phantom that the abolition of slavery would have uh, created the rise of all these flying machines and all these uh, huge, all other kinds of uh, fossil fuel machines that comes out there to the fields and, and grab all the crops and agriculture is revolutionized no longer in the same way that it was in the past, right? No more need for slavery. What the future is going to look like without this uh, cohesive organization that's called government that violates consent, I don't know. But you'll have billions of different ideas to provide you different solutions to meet your needs. Not just one, which is what government provides. right? And if you're saying that government can, can provide a solution, can organize something like that, they can't even... You, you, then if you're saying one person can centrally plan and control the lives out of thousands and millions of lives of people, show me one person that can produce something as simple as a pencil. I don't think it's about putting one person in charge of the millions of others, but I think that people cannot regulate themselves like that. It, it just is not, you have friends, it's not a reality. Are you saying that you have friends that cannot restrain themselves from, from hurting you? Yeah, there are people who can't restrain themselves from hurting people, other people all the time. Right, okay, all right. So are, are these your friends that cannot restrain Is Are that, that kind of friendships that you've established? No, they're no, okay. not my friends. You're not your friends. Okay, so you have a, a vetting system and who you allow in your community, right? Yes. Okay, let the barbarians outside of the walls. We're a civilization that belongs to the civilized, and let's grow that out, right? Let, let's weed out and find out who actually advocates against consent. Great. We'd like to have their names known. Social ostracism is the most powerful weapon we can have against would-be aggressors. People ostracize other people for reasons that aren't about whether they're good people. People ostracize people for terrible reasons all the time. And I think that left to our own devices, that there would be, I mean, you know, you can't theorize about these. I, you can't theorize about them, but there's no way to know exactly what would happen. But people want to be in power, and then you, you abolish. Need to be regulated. Then you abolish. If people want to be in power, right? If the worst of the worst want to be in power, then you abolish the organization that allows the worst of the worst to have access to that. And then they create more organizations. Where? Well, if there's no more government, if you abolish the idea of government, people can still create government, and they still and they consistently right, right, right. have throughout history, and they will. Right, right. They, and they go back to it. Right, but we abolish government that allows us to create our own form of security, our own laws that you give explicit consent to, that you have real contractual obligations to, and now we can see clearly who advocates against consent and who doesn't. Some guy who lives in the woods, once he created his own government, no one's going to trade with him. Good luck. How, how are you going to amass? I mean, it is a, a nice theory, but it just does not all right, work all right. well, let, let me show you a large Facts. scale. Facts. Um, the settlement of the not so wild west, right? This Hollywood myth that of uh, the media put it portrays that it was a, a lot of carnage, a lot of mayhem, people being murdered, gunslinging, never happened. The most murders you had in any city out there was like two. And the reason being, all these people, before they set out there to, to colonize and to settle and to ranch and to mine, all these communities created contracts with one another, right? Private contracts. contracts. And how will we resolve our, pro our property disputes? and uh, conflicts of disputes, right? And, and because of these contracts that they respected, it was peaceful all the way out there. There was, there, there, there was none of this mayhem that you're saying without government. There was no government out there. They're and peaceful it because it's groups of people that have been displaced and that are creating, having to create their own... I mean, they're not displaced, but they're isolated in a fairly, like, unpopulated area in which the, they have, like, pressing concerns about building things and like building a town and yeah in the formative stages of small isolated developments anarchy could work great but then things grow to be too big that wasn't the problem government kept trying to come in and take over everything was working beautifully until government for, like, came in how many years for a long time decades until government 
the, the thieves, organization of thieves and murderers, saw that they're making some money and they wanted a hand on that, and they started coming in and messing everything up. Okay, but that place has already been developed. You already have cities, you have towns, you have infrastructure, and it needs to be the things. That's what they did. They provided infrastructure. They provided roads. Roads were, were a thing that were people provided. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not a uh, government actually doesn't build roads today. They don't. They outsource it to local businesses to do it. So they don't build anything. They don't maintain the infrastructure. No, they rob from you and give it to the politically connected, which you don't have a choice to choose which businesses should be building the roads. They rob you of that economic freedom, which is why it's not as great as it would be in the market because if they're not doing a good job, you just point a click on a button, cancel, unsubscribe. You're out of business. Someone else will come in and do it better. Well, yeah, because they're given... Because you can choose, because you're a consumer. A consumer's king. It's like Netflix. A couple of years ago, try to increase the prices overnight. It's like, please, stop. i got choices. A lot of people cancel, unsubscribe, went to Hulu. And what's your problem with capitalism? I don't have a problem with capitalism. Capitalism is respect for private property, voluntary exchange, mm -hmm. right? Uh, nobody has a right to profit. If you're a bad business, then great. Um, you should fail. You should not get any bailouts, right? Sorry, entrepreneurship isn't for everyone, mm -hmm. right? Um, unfortunately, with government, you cannot cancel or unsubscribe. You cannot compete against them. Throw, throw you into a cage if you dare to. That is not capitalism. That's that's evil. That's tyranny. I, <laughs> you get arrested for doing things that are, well, the All law of stuff. is messed up. Yeah. But at the, the ideal is that things that harm the greater good. And the problem the greater is the good. greater good for so long was just rich white men in America and that's kind of who the system is still built for but I think that people are moving things in a direction and people are trying to affect change in which the, the greater good could mean everyone what is uh, at the expense of who so it's the greatest good right the greatest mm -hmm. the preference provided for for the greatest amount of people right the majority that's also the greatest evil then for the minority right well, yeah so good and evil in that instance cannot exist. It's not therefore a greater good. If it also creates evil, right? Then it's just a preference, yeah. right? Of that is violently forced onto other people. Goes back to the third question. When you said it was wrong and moral to violently force your ideas onto other people, now it's violently forcing your ideas onto a mortal of people who do not agree, who do not wish to associate, in which you do not allow them to have the freedom to disassociate. The abolition of government allows that. The freedom to associate and disassociate. Thousands and thousands of free societies catering to your lifestyle preference with real laws and rules you give explicit consent to. Now you can have an apartment complex that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. A rich, diverse world that we can all get along and, and live in together. I think the problem is, I don't know, it, boiling down to what, like, the basis of humanity and, like, what human rights do you think they depend on? people's safety and security um, or their freedom of choice and I don't think the same thing I don't think that supporting people's uh, like freedom of choice is going like I don't think freedom to choose is not going to support like the safety and health of everyone well there's no safety here as we already uh, concluded that there's no obligation to provide security so there's no safety and if government first has to threaten your health in order to provide you health then it's not really health care right um, right if you don't sign up they'll they'll extort you if you don't pay that extortion fine they'll throw you into a cage so you can't necessarily say that it's it has an interest or value for your life I think I don't know that I care more about equality me too uh, in that quality freedom and choice and, and when you mean equality you mean by um, by all individuals though right that we're equal as individuals and each individual so have no authority over any other individual in no. terms of uh, telling what you can and cannot do with your body or your property no not necessarily that I think that people should be I don't know yeah, bodily autonomy and everything. But right. I think you would never have that under government. If I don't have as much bodily autonomy, but other people have the same amount as me, then I think that's fine. I would rather have that than, you know, the current system or a system in which, like, there's no standards for anyone. Like, 
I don't know. I, I, I just think it's why should anyone get an extra thing before everyone gets one? Like An extra thing before everyone gets one? Yeah, I think everyone should get a baseline of like human rights and humanity before you start. What are rights? What are human rights? Yeah. What's Life, that? liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is a hard question. Um, um, I, I honestly have not like been very introspective on it. I've been taught, you know, like yeah. the Bill of Rights and everything, and generally I agree with it. But I don't have um, a super specific like definition myself, just right. because I'm not. I don't know. I don't think there are such things as rights. There's obligations. I have an obligation to respect your, your bodily integrity, your claim over your self-ownership, over the property you've obtained justly, right? Um, that obligation. When you say, like, people have a right to housing, or a right to water, for example, that means that you have to necessarily enslave someone to go out there into the lake and enslave him and force him to bottle it up and to transport it and to give it to somebody. I don't think so. I think that you can do things in exchange for other things. Well, then that's no longer right. That's the market providing that stuff, right? Because there's a market demand for water. People are entrepreneurial, and they go out there and, and, and bottle this up and, and provide it at a very low-cost, uh, minimal way. I mean, it costs, like, what, to, to get, like, one of these bottles of water? How much is that? Like, 70 cents? Yeah. Right? That came from all across miles, thousands of miles away. You didn't have to put out any effort in that. And, and his production and his transport and his bottling and the processing facilities that puts it all together at a very cheap cost to you, you have access to it now. Yeah. And that wasn't right. That's just, I have a desire for this good and other people are coming to provide it for you in trading. Well, yeah, but then why shouldn't it be a right? Why, why shouldn't clean water be a right? Uh, and why can't we have a government that gives us that? Well, government, sort of well, 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 that would give us that. Well, government does give you that. They give you they give poison. No, they give you poisoned water, and they force you to pay for it. And now, because that water is poisoned, CPS can come and take your children because now you are harming them. Yeah, and I. That's government. But they could be giving us water, not necessarily for free but in exchange for taxes. Right, but taxes are not voluntary, so it's not so much in exchange, right? Me uh, taking taking your purse and giving you a pencil, and you don't want any of that, that's not an exchange, that's that's theft. No. Yeah, that's petty robbery. <laughs> no, but it's something that you need and something that people need and something that you cannot live without, those basic things. I don't think that's a problem having that be provided. Yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and that's something I would love to trade for, right? Yeah. All right, and so that's why these things are provided. You know what happens when government gets in control of that stuff? You have situation in Venezuela. There are now bread lines. Uh, people are, there are bread lines and there's also lines for diapers, a lot of basic goods because government intervened in the market and try to do some price control, limiting goods and products that was already providing in itself in, a, in, a, in abundance before that. And now there's nothing left for them when government gets in control of that. That is the effect of socialism. That is the effect of government. Government does not provide these things. Markets provide these things. All the government can do is rob from people and try to figure out where to put that money to. They're not a real business. They can't allocate e resources efficiently. There's no price signal for them to tell whether they're producing too much or too little. And so the inevitably, is not a business. right? It's an organization of thieves. Because it's not for profit. Well, you say that, but uh, a lot of uh, politicians get really rich off of that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, and it's very wealthy people, and you pretty much have to be wealthy to get super involved. Yeah, they get involved because uh, you have an opportunity to rob a lot from a lot of people and become rich off of that. And that's what it's for. It's for rich, violent sociopaths who want to violently control the lives of other people and dictate what you can and cannot do with your property, what you can and cannot do with your land, what you can and cannot do with your body. I don't have a problem being regulated. Well, if you want to have a BDSM relationship with someone who tells you what you can and cannot do, have fun. Have a safe word, right? <laughs> as long as I it's consensual. I, I don't know. Um, personally, for me, and, you know, uh, I would be fine exchanging, you know, certain things for rights. I, not rights, but, like, for certain... Goods. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna fill, in, fill in the blank not, there for you. <laughs> not money necessarily, but... It's just trading, right? Uh, money is something else that government has monopolized. Before 1913, you used to be competing currencies. Yeah. Well, that was a mess. No, it wasn't. It's like any other... Money is like any other commodity. Like uh, this camera, this mic, this jacket is a commodity. When you have a market competition in commodities, you have a vast improvement of quality. People are competing to provide a good, good goods in that regards. But governments also Until in this you get market... monopolies. And what would regulate monopolies? Uh, you can't have a monopoly if anyone can compete. Yes, you can. No. If you if you have like uh, if you have a, a, a t-shirt business right if you look at a mall you think yeah they will love the other t-shirt business to go out so they can be the only one but anyone can compete right some monopoly saying that you control this one area of the market but without government to create these trade restrictions and entry business costs anyone can compete there's no monopolies it can't exist yes how because some people are going to be better at it they're going to have more resources resources so they just have a good people. business but that's not a monopoly if somebody can start a Kickstarter campaign and compete against you. You can't compete with large, like, you can't, your Kickstarter campaign is not going to be able to compete with a huge company that has a bunch of resources. People said the same thing about uh, PlayStation versus uh, Sony. People said the same thing about uh, Google versus uh, Yahoo. Uh, well, Google's beat Yahoo. People, yeah, but these things started off small compared to these large giants at the time in the market. Right? I mean, <laughs> if you can build your own company, you can build a monopoly. If a monopoly means that no one else is providing that good, only you are. But if anyone can compete in that market, you're no longer the only person providing that good. I think the regulation against monopolies would be hard and fast rules. Better, not the rules we have now, not the laws we have now, but having, keeping them res like re socially responsible, not just the whole like invisible hand, free market, people will regulate themselves, just because. How, well, give me a monopoly that would exist then. Give me a monopoly, an example of a monopoly, without lumber. government intervention. What? Lumber. Lumber. So there's only, uh, today, only one lumber company? No. No? Yeah. So you're saying that a person in, in a free market, that they bought all the lumber property in the world and they're the only people who can produce lumber? No one's allowed to plant trees on their own property to compete and farm them? Uh, yeah, you can, but your costs are going to be higher for producing this lumber, your, so your prices are going to be higher. People are just going to go with whatever's cheaper most of the time, or whatever's a better product. Yeah, yeah. So that means even if, so say that they have a large market share, not necessarily a monopoly, um, knowing that they don't have a, a right to profit, how do you think they became so big? Because a lot of people appreciate their good product, right? Because it's yeah. cheap, it's affordable. And then, quality. and then once they are in that position where they've given people a cheap and affordable product, then they can raise prices. That's what Walmart and then, does. They and, then, and then what happened to Netflix when they tried to do that? They lost so much profit. And they, and they, they, they lost so, so much. People just cancel at a point of a button. You don't have control. You're no king anymore. The only people who are king are consumers. If, 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 like, have you ever been to cookout? I think it's hard to compare something that is a physical product with like an electronic thing because I think that like like geography is a huge determinant in that like I think like a physical store it's easier for that to be a monopoly than like something online in which it is easy enough to just go all those codes you see with eBay yeah eBay is an electronic retailer in which yeah I don't like this I yeah. can do this but when you live in a place where you only have one or two stores you're gonna go to wherever it's cheaper then you just go online Okay. <laughs> and order all goods yeah, it's just so cheap. Yeah, why not? That's the easiest. We live in the 21st century. You don't need to really walk. There's there's businesses now that'll buy you groceries and take care of that for you. There's people who come right to the door and pick you up. Go to the Uber will come pick yeah. you up, right? Yeah, the, the the market's great for that. Uh, you don't have to physically walk to these places anymore. The market has kind of liberated you in those long distances. The market for cars now, you're no longer stuck in the city that you grew up with. You can now travel long distances, liberated the poor and, and poverty in terms of transportation and freedom of movement. That wasn't government. Was liberated, but... well, in the past, before that, people grew up and died in the same city that they were, that they'd known. You know, I agree with the ideals and I agree with the end goal, but I don't agree with all right. Well, I guess, uh, do you want to have more discussion about that another time? Yeah, I yeah. mean, this is something that I have not, in, like, thoroughly investigated very much myself. But All right. I, not, I've never.
never taken a class in it. It's not my area of study at all. And it's something I'm interested in, but I'm not um, very well versed. Right, right, right. Well, or anything. let me give you a flyer. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll send you a lot of uh, good essays with some uh, okay. good uh, actual information for you to look over and peruse. Okay. And uh, let's have this conversation again. See okay. what you think afterwards. Okay. All right. I'm Cal. Elena. Elena. Pleasure. Yeah, Pleasure. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Me too.